New Zealand, or as we call it in South Africa, New Zealand. Thanks to strict lockdowns early in the pandemic, New Zealand had eliminated COVID entirely. But because of that, only about a third of New Zealanders have bothered to get vaccinated. So when the Delta variant hit, the COVID rate shot up. But this time, when the government lockdowns were imposed, people started to rebel. COVID lockdowns are bringing out some strange criminal behavior. Police in New Zealand spotted a suspicious car, started chasing it, and received quite the surprise when they finally pulled it over. As they searched the car, they found this thousands of dollars in cash and a trunk full of KFC. The men had bought the food from outside Auckland, where takeout services are closed due to a spike in COVID. Police aren't sure if the suspects were planning to sell the food. They now face charges for breaching COVID lockdown rules. Wow, breaching COVID rules and running from the cops for fried chicken? It was smuggling fried chicken. Yo, can I just say, I'm so grateful that this should happen in a white ass country like New Zealand. Cause if there were any black people involved, yo, that would have undone the entire civil rights movement. You were smuggling what? God damn it, Darnell. We can't vote anymore cause of you. And this really puts into perspective how, you know, when people in America are like, these lockdowns are tyranny. Yo, even when New York was locked down during the worst part of the pandemic, we could still get takeout. Yeah, you just had to dip every drumstick in hand sanitizer. It wasn't tyranny. And here's what I'm wondering, like what happened to this chicken after the photo was taken? You know, I mean, something tells me it's not sitting in the evidence locker like, like cocaine. I bet the New Zealand cops are like, as you can see, these sick criminals brought uh, back uh, one half bucket of chicken and they got mashed potato gravy stains on my shirt. Ugh. I mean, seriously, I never thought I'd see people smuggling fast food past the police. Like Netflix, if you're watching, please make this the next season of Narcos. Boyo, o plata. Moving on to technology news. Over the last few years, Facebook has gotten a lot of bad press for its newsfeed, which has become a constant stream of hate speech, conspiracy theories, and high school friends trying to sell you essential oils. But now, Facebook has come up with a solution to all of this negative coverage. A new investigation is giving insight into a big push from Facebook to reshape its image online. The New York Times found the social media site has launched a new initiative to showcase positive stories about the company on your newsfeed. Okay, first of all, I don't understand why Facebook is trying to promote itself to people who are already on Facebook. I mean, anyone who's on Facebook isn't worried about Facebook's problems, you know? They have bigger concerns, like where you can find a gun store that also sells ivermectin. But hey, but hey, I'm, I'm not hating, you know? I get it, Facebook wants to use Facebook how everyone else uses Facebook. Nobody uses social media to be like, guys, my hemorrhoids aren't going away. No, we only post the stuff that makes us look good. I mean, just this past weekend, I rented a family to go apple picking with me. Hashtag winning. And finally, some news out of Pennsylvania, the state with the highest rate of mayors per East Town. I think most people are aware that America can be, um, let's say, a little extra when it comes to putting people in prison. But I think we can all agree that this story is taking it a bit too far. Here's a crazy story out of central PA. A man is facing up to seven years in prison, all because he failed to pay the right amount for a Mountain Dew. The man grabbed a bottle of Mountain Dew, slapped $2 on the counter, then walked away, but he still owed 43 cents. The store called police. Officers tracked him down. Now he is facing a felony under the state's three strikes law because he was convicted of shoplifting twice before. And to that, all I can say is, you have to be f***ing kidding me. There is so much wrong with the story, starting with, why are you calling the police on someone over this in the first place? Is it really worth your time? The phone call, the meeting with the cops, the paperwork, going through security cam footage, and then at the end, we're like, we did it! We got our 43 cents back. Like, here's the thing. We know these laws are the hardest on poor people, but you know who's also getting screwed over with this? Taxpayers, people think. Instead of our taxes going to roads, schools, free Wi-Fi that actually works, instead, we're wasting it on prosecuting somebody for 43 cents. I feel like as taxpayers, we should get a choice when it comes to this stuff, you know? They should make a game show or something. America loves that. Yeah, it should be like, who wants to spend a million there? You know, do we want to pay back the store their 43 cents? 
or do we want to use the taxpayer's money to imprison someone for seven years at $40,000 a year? I think we would all pretty quickly decide that we're just gonna pay back the store. Oh, and, and by the way, by the way, can we all agree that the three strikes rule is bullshit? Because if you're gonna base your laws on sports, at least get the rules right, right? Because baseball doesn't just have strikes, they also have foul balls. If you have two strikes and you hit a foul ball, you're not out. They just let it slide. That's what this should have been, right? It's a foul ball crime. You don't go to prison for it. And also, baseball doesn't just punish the batter, right? It punishes the pitcher. So technically, the rule should be that if the cops mess up four times, you get to walk. You know, like if the cops pull you over repeatedly and they find nothing, at some point, you should get one free crime. And I'm not saying like a, like a crazy thing like murder, you know, just, just like a first base crime. You know, like you get to shoplift something small or you can have like one free bar fight and go home. Or maybe they say you can start a meth lab at the studio where you tape your TV show and not get taken downtown for questioning, you know, cause it's just meth. I mean, we all agree on that, right? Just, just me.